Hi, hello and a huge welcome to the channel. The addiction today is the World of Warcraft Professions tier list just for making gold. So grab a coffee, please get comfy, and let's get started. In World of Warcraft currently, there are 14 professions spread over 10 expansions covering almost 20 years in-game, and I have been farming for almost 17 years of that time. This video is solely aimed at only showing you some of the many possibilities you have at making gold within game professions, giving you a honest and logical perspective of each one. With the new expansion, comes new features and changes being made to professions in game, and with the lack of informative information, as of yet, I will not be covering any new features. This tier list is solely based off my own experiences, farming in WoW and how I use certain professions to help make my gold. You may agree with some of my methods, you may totally dislike others, as I stated, this is just my honest open opinion and thoughts on this topic, that is all. Starting with Archaeology. This is what we would class as a secondary profession in World of Warcraft, it is looked over by so many players in-game. Players just simply not bothering or have completely forgotten about this profession entirely which is understandable, which is extremely boring and slow for making gold. I find archaeology to be best suited when farming in the open world as you are able to mine, herb or skin, as you survey dig sites around Azeroth. This secondary profession does have a couple of pets we can farm and sell on the auction house as well as one rare mount called the sandstone drake, the recipe of which only comes from archaeology. The actual time spent traveling around to the different dig sites, as well as the randomness as to what you might get in regards to rewards, makes this profession not ideal for making gold. Everyone knows, battle pets and mounts take time to sell, and are best considered as a passive income only. And is the only reason why I am only giving this one star, and placing it at the bottom of the tier list for now. Next, we come to blacksmithing, the first crafting-based profession on the list. This profession of course is best combined with mining, gathering your own reagents and eliminating any gold costs. Blacksmithing is highly hit and miss when it comes down to making gold. If you are high enough in level, then crafting or recrafting end game gear this close to the end of the expansion still happens, but not enough to make any decent profits from it. Even if you try to sell your services in trade chat all day. You can make rare old world transmogs, but as we all know, these are a slow sell, you could get lucky with just selling one for a small profit, but again for me. This is not enough gold income and overall profits to make it worth my time. I personally will just make tools like the sturdy spade and repair hammers, but will not waste my reagents with anything else from this profession. You can make gear to disenchant for enchanting materials, which I will go over later. Blacksmithing for making gold for me currently is just not worth it, and I will be giving it 2 stars, and that is due to the disenchanting and crafting tools only, nothing more. Next comes engineering, and it's best to class this as a supporting profession to be totally honest. Yes engineering has some battle pets and mounts you are able to farm and craft, but like before, these tend to be a time investment and will take time to sell on the auction house. What makes engineering truly a great profession to use as a farmer is the many devices we have at our disposal. From wormhole machines able to teleport us around different expansions in-game, extra mailboxes and Jeeves the repair bot, rocket boots and the glider as just some examples. But one of the best toys only engineers can use and that is the famous Looterang, which will loot any dead target up to 40 yards away, making a lot of open world farming locations semi-AFK. Just be careful when using certain engineer toys, they can tend to backfire sometimes. Overall for gold making I find it not to be good, but I am giving this profession 4 stars, simply because of the extra utilities that come with it. Making farming in certain situations and areas extremely fun and even more simple to do. These are just my thoughts and how I make gold using professions, please remember that. Next we move on to enchanting. This profession is split into two different categories, one being enchanting and the other being disenchanting. Enchanting at end game level for me is just not worth my time and effort trying to make any kind of profits from. 
Farming for reagents just to use on enchants is a waste of time. Some of the end game reagents, like the Shadow Flame Essence, are hard to come by unless you buy them from the auction house. Which at current prices will only kill what little profit you could possibly make. Honestly, I stay clear of enchanting, it's just not for me or for making decent gold from and does not fit my play style. Disenchanting, however, is a different ball game altogether and is one profession that does make me a constant supply of gold when farming. Absolutely all bind on equipment drops get sent straight to my disenchanter, from there I will decide to keep the items or to just simply break them down for reagents materials. And this is just from farming raids, dungeons and open world locations. This profession can be supplied by blacksmithing, tailoring and leatherworking mostly using reagent shuffles and flip, and is something I do on a daily basis with the amount of farming I do. For this reason alone this profession would get 4 stars also and is a nice way to make a little extra gold, and trust me here, it adds up rather quickly, well it does for me at least. Sadly there are, but two professions I just simply do not use as of yet. Both alchemy and inscription can be good for gold making due to the raid files and potions you can craft to sell, but there will be a lot of competition in this market. More so at the start of new expansions, when players start to unlock the new recipes. For myself however, I just cannot justify spending the time and effort on something I just would not enjoy doing or make tons of gold from. Because of this sole reason, I will be giving both professions 3 stars and a neutral ranking, both can be good at times, very bad other times, it's just one of them professions really. Next we deal with the fishing profession. You either dislike fishing or you love it, it's that simple. Fishing for me is an extremely decent way to make gold afk while at work or dealing with life and so on. Parking a character at one of the many fishing locations around Azeroth, allowing me to concentrate on other things but still making gold in-game. From ice hole fishing to Sir Pinch a lot in Dragon Flight, fishing for a mountain Shadowlands, even reagents in Cataclysm, right down to rare fish in classic zones. Fishing is 100% boring, but being able to do other stuff as you do fish is the way to go with this profession, so giving this profession 4 stars is the right call for me as I do this every day. The next profession to quickly cover is Herbalism. This gathering profession is just simple, you go out into the open world farm herbs, and then either sell on the auction house, or use in conversions or shuffles. I tend to do herbalism when I am mining in old world zones as the herbs seem to always have better prices than the current dragon flight herbs. There are some locations that can make decent gold like the mushroom cave in Ngoro as prices on these herbs are always decent. And mining for arcane crystals at the same time just makes this even better. You can use this profession when travel farming between locations, but one of my favorite spots has to be Dark Heart Thicket in the Legion expansion. Dreamleaf has a decent price tag most of the time, but farming Dark Heart will just yield you the most amount in the shortest time possible, and takes less than 3 minutes per run. I do not bother with milling my herbs as I do not use inscription, but that is a further option on making gold, just not one I like to do. Very good profession to use and one that can make you decent gold, only if you put in the work time and effort to gather them. Like with any profession, herbalism is strong at the start of any new expansion and is worth farming herbs to make gold. But being able to use certain dungeons, farming while traveling, an X amount of open world multi farms we can combine herbalism with, we have a lot of choices. Just picking the right herb at the right time to farm and sell is key, of course and I do a lot as you can see from what I have stored the past couple of days. This profession however will only be getting 3 stars. There is nothing wrong with it, I just prefer to spend my farming time doing something else, and will only herb while traveling or in need of reagents to refill my banks, that is all currently.
Next is mining and this will be extremely quick as this profession works exactly the same way as herbalism does. Going out into the open world or into a select few dungeons and raids, farming as much as you can, and selling for a profit or used in shuffles and conversions, it's that simple. Currently dragon flight ores are just pointless to farm due to the low price tags across the board, which can benefit us, but more on that shortly. Travel farming and mining as you go from point A to point B, maximizing all angles when trying to make gold with this profession. Even with its rather good reagent shuffle, which I will mention soon, this profession like with herbalism, will only be getting 3 stars. Mining will explode at the start of the new expansion like with most professions within the first couple of weeks, do remember this. The next profession on the list is jewel crafting and prospecting. Sadly like with other professions, jewel crafting currently is just not good for making gold. Rings, necklaces and so on just do not sell enough for me to even bother making jewelry to sell on the markets for a profit. At the start of the new expansion you may have better luck within the first couple of weeks from launch if you're lucky with any new recipes, but how many other players will have the exact same idea? Currently the prospecting side to jewel crafting is where I make my gold with this profession, using the Cerevite or Shuffle as just one prime example, even better when you can use this Shuffle AFK. As I work from home, this is ideal for me as I can simply leave this shuffle running, only having to check on it every few minutes to restart the process. Dragon Flight and Mists of Pandoria are currently my two top expansions for prospecting, I tend to just buy ore from the auction house for less than 20 silver per one, and in stacks of 20 to 30k. Then double my gold if not more simply prospecting everything and selling it all back on the auction house and again for a profit. Prospecting is a great way to fill the time while I am semi-AFK and yet it still makes me decent gold to this day and is why I am giving this profession 4 stars. Next comes both leatherworking and tailoring as these two professions are very similar in how they work and ways to make gold. Both are crafting professions for gear new or old world recipes, so crafting these for profits may seem like a good idea, but this will only work if you have learned any rare recipes. Then you will need rare reagents to craft certain transmogs or endgame gear, then the time spent trying to sell them on the auction house. Again transmogs do sell, but they could take months to shift the big ticket items, and this is the sole reason why I do not craft gear to sell. Oh no, instead I craft gear I can then disenchant and sell the reagents for a profit, and it works every single time. As stated, this method works the same way with leather working. But I would highly suggest saving all leather and converting them to higher grades before selling them like I have shown in previous reagent videos. Tailoring however is the second best AFK farming method after fishing, which is fully 100% AFK. Setting a tailor up to craft bolts can take time, depending how many bolts you are crafting at that time. This is what makes this shuffle AFK due to the long ass times it takes just to craft bolts, as you can see with the examples on screen. Despite me using this shuffle with tailoring for many years now, yes it is extremely helpful using the AFK method when working, but I am still only giving this profession 3 stars. This is mainly due to the stupidly long crafting times, I fully understand why they are needed, but that does not mean I need to agree with them, and this one rule just sucks cheesy toes period. And we can only hope they change this in the new expansion, but I highly doubt that. Leatherworking also gets 3 stars due to us being able to convert lower tier leathers into higher grades with higher price tags than their normal versions. You can also use this shuffle, but I would suggest only converting leathers as it's far faster meaning more gold in the long run, which is what we all want honestly, fast and easy gold. Cooking comes next, and like with other professions currently, this also is struggling to make any decent gold this close to the end of the expansion. It is still possible, because many guilds still run raids and mythic plus dungeons, and all need food buffs. But again, like before, how many other players have the same idea? As prices are down on cooking reagents, it might be your idea to buy cheap from the auction house now. 
Craft as much food buffs as you like, place some on the market and keep the rest for the new expansion. At the start of War Within, players will still need these food buffs until the new recipes have been found or unlocked, then sold, so we have a small window to make gold. I will not actively farm for reagents for the cooking profession as I get enough just from farming alone, but for now at least, I will be giving cooking 2 stars only and moving on. So that has been 13 professions so far, leaving just one profession left, which is currently top on my personal tier list, with 5 stars, and that of course would be skinning. If you look at this with an open mind, skinning in World of Warcraft has the most options to making gold out of all the professions in game to date, so allow me to quickly explain how and why. As a skinner, we are able to skin and farm mobs within dungeons and raids, and with such a wide range of locations compared to other professions. We can endlessly farm in open world farming spots and multi farms around Azeroth. Skinning has many ways to convert leather into higher grades, which sell for more gold, and is easy to farm for. Using vendors to simply exchange leathers to better grades also in older expansions, being able to mass craft gear just to disenchant for reagents at all levels and with zero costs. Generally speaking, skinning is by far one of the better professions for making gold in game and it has been for so many years now. You can further improve skinning by combining it with either herbalism or mining for even more potential gold, depending when and where you are farming. These are just some of the perks we have as a skinner, and the main reason as to why it gets 5 stars on my tier list just because this one profession over the years has made me too much gold. So this was my own personal thoughts and views on the profession's tier list for making gold now complete. Thank you so so much for watching, please do not forget to smash that like and subscribe buttons if you enjoyed this video, it really does help the channel to grow. As for me, there is another farm calling my name so until the next one, and like always, stay away from the crazy people and stay safe out there.